Let's commit this time unto the Lord in praying. Gracious Heavenly Father, I want to give thanks to you for this wonderful morning. Thank you that we have this opportunity together here in your name to worship you and now in your name to listen to your word. Lord, we pray that your spirit will lead us and guide us into your truth and help us to understand, help us to receive it, help us to apply it in our life and help us to continue to hold on to it until the day to come. We need your grace, we need your strength, we need your help. So Lord, be with us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We've come to the fifth church in our series of the seven churches in Revelations. Today we want to look at the church in Sardis. I think previously we have already done quite a lot of the introductions of all the books um, from the first one until now. Just in case to some of us that we do not know, there's always an introduction that Jesus introduced himself, the writing to uh, all these churches and sending to all these messengers in all these churches, basically to let them know that he's in charge. So this morning, as we look at it, we do know that Jesus is the ruler and Jesus is in charge of all the churches. But before we enter into more clearly and details on the, the lessons and also on our teaching, I would just want to bring to every one of us over here that there is this uh, Chinese idiom called Wen Sui Zhu Wa, um, translation. Translating into English is called boiling fog. <laughs> you use warm water to boil the frog. When you put a frog into a boiling water, immediately the frog will jump out. But when you put the frog into a lukewarm water, the frog will adapt to the temperature and it will get itself comfortable and slowly you increase the heat of the boiling water and the frog will slowly adapt to the water getting hotter, warmer and warmer and sooner or later when you heat it up there is a cooked frog there dead without the frog knowing that he's dead Today, a lot of times we will need to ask ourselves as a follower of Jesus Christ whether we are a thermometer or a thermostat. A thermometer will follow the temperatures of the room. We will adapt into the culture, we will adapt into the system and sometimes we lose ourselves. A thermostat Define the environment just like the aircon. But in a cooler country, a thermostat, they will define and they will decide the room temperature. If it's too cold, then it will change the temperatures into warmer. If over here it is too hot, then we turn on the Acorn, and then we get cold. And today, as a follower of Jesus Christ, we need to ask, our, ask ourselves whether wish a wish, thermometer or thermostat. And sometimes if we are not careful, we will be like the boiling frog. We are into it so much that we didn't know there is a danger over there. And when we realize the danger is already too late because we cannot jump out from it. Today, when we study the church of Sardis, let us look a little bit about the city of Sardis. Sardis was the capital city of Lydia. It was founded 
1,200 before Christ. The original city sat on the top of a 1,000 foot high and it was one and there was one narrow road leading into the city. So for military purposes, it is the best defense because it's very difficult for any enemies to go up. So if we want to defend, everyone will need to go up there and then the enemies will not be able to attack you. At one time, Sardis has also been known as the greatest cities in the world. When it reached its peak, it is famous for their wealth because over there, they found gold and silver. And during their reign, they have created and also built a lot, a lot of building over there. I think in the history, there was one earthquake that's happened during that time. The governor during that time, you know, saying to the citizens, why not, you know, we give you free tax, you do not need to pay your tax, you know, you rebuild uh, the whole city, you rebuild your own house. The citizens reply, no need. We still give our tax, we still build, uh, in the same time, we also build our houses because they are so wealthy, every one of them. But in the history of that city as well, even though with that strong advantage that they have, two times, without any fight back, two times, the whole city was being took over without fighting. Why? Because their soldiers are too complacent, too comfortable, and they fall asleep. And one of the helmet fall down, and he came down to collect the helmet, and the enemies noted it, how he go out, and then they sneak in and spy in, and that's how they take over the whole city without any fight back. Why? Because the guard fell asleep and the helmet fell down. Two times, not only one time. That is the city of Sardis. And the church in Sardis most likely had adopted the atmosphere of the city that the church has become so into it instead of changing the culture and also what they have been practicing, but they are just basically lazy and complacent during that time. So they have no effect. And in fact, in other words, it is a dying church, which they did not realize it. That is where Jesus came in here in this letter. Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, part A. To the angels of the church in Sardis writes, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Jesus comes to this church as one who has the seven spirits of God and the one who has, who is holding the seven stars. The seven spirits of God refer to the Holy Spirit in his complete ministry. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2, The Spirit of the Lord rests on him the spirit of wisdom of, and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. This is a reminder to all the churches and he's speaking to every one of us here as well, to all the churches that we are to operate not under the power of any human skills, leaderships or organizations, but under the awesome power of the Holy Spirit. When the church walks in the power of the flesh, we will surely fail. But when we walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, there will be success. There will be glory and there will be power and life instead of deadness and ineffectiveness. When a human spirit is in control of a human body, amazing things can accomplish. A pianist can sit down there and play, perform thousands of delicate and precise movements to produce a beautiful music piece. But let the same pianist who suffers some injuries, then leave his arms paralyzed, and the mind is no longer in control of the arms, 
and fingers and hands, try as it might. The human spirit cannot or will not have the hands to make that beautiful piece of music again. So too, when the Spirit of God is in control of the, each member in the church of God, great things can be accomplished. But today, we see immobilizations as a result, nothing can be accomplished without the Spirit of God. That is why Jesus here, in the words that he is the one who holds the seven spirits of God. The seven stars are the messengers who bring the people the word of God. Jesus appears as one who has everything the church needs to succeed. His spirit is all the power the church needs. And his words has all the directions the church needs. Jesus seems to be saying, if you submit to me, if you put your trust in me, if you put your faith in me, you will find in me all you need to accomplish my missions in this world. And this is the message to the modern church. Men are trying every method under the sun to reach sinners, to do the work of the church. But all the power we need is found in the fullness of the Holy Spirit and also in the Word of God. What we need is not a method, but a new desire to seek the fullness of the Holy Spirit and to do everything according to the teachings of the Word of God. So here, to the church, Jesus has no praise to this very church. If we look at point number two, Jesus has only rebuke and warning to this church. Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, part B, verse 2 and verse 3. I know your deeds, which in the earlier few churches, we do know that Jesus knew everything. Now, Jesus knew about this church. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. In our modern terms, if we want to understand it better, it's like zombies. You are alive, but you are dead. Uh, if you are familiar with zombies. <laughs> Here he says, wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have found your deeds unfinished in the sights of my God. They might have a lot, a lot of deeds, but unfinished. They started a lot of things, and here Jesus found out that you start a lot of things, but you never finish it. And here in the sight of God, Jesus is telling this church to wake up, strengthen what remains, and is about to die. He continues, remember, therefore, what you have received and heard, hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Jesus knows the works of this church. The reputations that they have is being alive but dead. In a brief introduction, Jesus is basically telling them and in fact, it's a penetrating one. They have no deeds. They start a lot of things, but at the end of times, they have a lot of works, but unfinished. They just have a name, a reputation, being alive, but dead. You have a name of being alive. Name only, reputations of being alive. And they just have a name. Maybe this church as we have looked at the city and also the church of Sardis, with the size of the city, with the money, the wealth that they have, with the activities maybe during that time, they have a lot because they have started something but never finished, that cause people to take notice of them. Maybe it's also a flagship church, a model church everyone would know. And most likely it's in the city centre. 
but looks can be deceiving. It's like a body covered with cancer, but from outwardly, we won't be able to see it. We look at that person, he's healthy, but he's dying. Many churches focus on their reputations only to lack reality. It's easy for people to think more highly than they should about churches, simply because by their observations of the external features. A church may be alive spiritually, be it formal or informal, enthusiastic or subdued, big or small, but here, Jesus knows and He sees everything that happens in this church, the church in Sardis. He knows and He sees and this is how He rebuilt the church. Sardis, for a variety of reasons, had the repetitions of being alive, but yet, they did not have the reality. They did not really have life in it. Because here it says, but you are dead. When we trace this tendency right through the Bible, we will see sometimes preacher, pastor, priest are vulnerable as well. Sometimes, you know, we are caught in between here and there Sometimes, you know, we fail maybe in our weaknesses or maybe in our ignorance, little awareness of the greatness of God. Sometimes we did not look at our tasks as a priest and the, and the one who called by God as important, as serious as it can be. The same applies to Christians as well. Sometimes we just come with an appearance of godliness but lacking of power. Recently, I did one counseling session with a couple um, because they have done something, um, something wrong. They seek some guidance over there. I think the first thing that I would uh, ask them to do is to come to the Lord to confess their sins. I ask them to pray. And they asked me, they replied me, um, Reverend, can I pray in my heart? silently, not openly. I said, um, better to pray it out loud so that your spouse and me, we can hear. Then he told me throughout his Christian life, he never ever pray a prayer out loud and openly. I'll let you judge whether there is this person, you know, truly live a Christian life. Or maybe to some of us over here, it's the same. We have never prayed a prayer out loud. I mean, I'm not saying that praying out loud then it means that you are a Christian. But what I'm saying is that sometimes in our belief and in also in our life, the faith that we have in Christ is basically just with a reputation by name only. This is why I insist in my confirmation class, all those who follow my class, I insist that every one of them take turns, pray, and pray out loud. And pray with their eyes open. If they do not know, they have written down their prayers. Pray with your eyes open and written down. You follow it and then you read it. It's okay. But at least you pray. Life. But after the class, I do not know whether they still practice it or not. And sometimes all these things, we see it happens. In fact, it's among us, maybe. Regularly, maybe to some of them, they have the assemblies. 
the gathering of people. We see a lot of people gathering together, but how many, when we gather together, we live a life of obedience unto the Lord daily. We can come to church, after church, listening to the message, reading the Word of God, worshipping, praying, receiving, confessing our sins, receiving the Holy Communion, the forgiveness, and then after that, maybe to some of us later on, when you want to go out, someone block your car. Straight away, all the teaching gone already. We assemble, but there's no obedience. One Bible scholar says, Sardis may have been the first church in history of Christianity to be characterized by nominal Christianity. It members belong to Christ by name, but not in the heart. We need to ask, what's caused the dying stage of this church? I think answers can be discerned by various clues in the few verses that we read here, I just want to show you four marks of a dying church. First, arrogance. They live on previous glory. They live on reputation. They were not humbly desperate for the Spirit's works among them. And a dying church are filled with arrogant people. Secondly, Spiritual downness. We get the verse that we read just now, wake up! Which means, to a certain extent, they are still sleeping. So check your neighbors beside you whether they are sleeping or not. Nora. If they need a wake up call, wake them up, please. They lost their hunger for the things of God. One of the signs of death in a person is that they lost appetite. A dead person cannot eat. So churches that are alive are hungry. Today, do you feel hungry now? I think we are thinking about breakfast. <laughs> Praise the Lord, you're alive. If you're not thinking about food, most probably you are dead. Christians that are alive want to know more of God's words. A person with little vitality or no vitality sits in a worship service and thinks and compare to everything else in life. This is of very little importance. To me, not important. They sought not the Spirit's failing us. They are not asking the Spirit to fill us to the fullness. They are not walking in the Spirit. Is there a more urgent message for the church today than be filled with the Spirit of God? Thirdly, a dying church, one of the monks, a loss of gospel amazement. Remember what you receive. That is what Jesus mentioned to them. Remember what you receive. Today, what we receive is the gospel and they lost the wonder of the gospel. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, I press on to take hold of what for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Never lose the wonder of that. The gospel that we receive, the gospel is not just a message. That gospel is Jesus. That gospel is life. And that gospel brings us purpose and meaning while living on earth until Jesus comes back. We are not receiving the gospel and now waiting to die. If that's the case, then every one of us, let's die together. No. When we receive Jesus, we receive the gospel, we know there's a wonder about it. 
and let us go and share this good news to other people. Let us prepare ourselves and bring more and more people to come to know Jesus. When we lost the gospel of amazement, then we lost the meaning of being alive as a church. Lastly, a lack of missional engagement. Here, it is very true. Because we are so, so complacent, not threatening, and this is also one of the churches that there is no persecution as compared to the other churches. We are just so, so comfortable. Which means we do not have any weakness. We are the same in the community. And Jesus said here, they have the name, they have their repetition only. When we have the identity, when we have the name, when we have a repetition, remember, we would also have a calling. And there is this saying, the church that is not sending is ending. The church that is not sending is ending. Here, studies. I don't want to put us into thinking about, you know, wow, you know, we are dying. But I want to give us a thought of what is a living church. A living church, this is some way that I quoted, a living church is humble before Christ, hunger for the spirit of Christ in all of the gospel of Christ and faithful in bearing weakness to Christ. I think that will be the next slide. This is a living church. Humble before Christ, hunger for the spirit of Christ in all of the gospel of Christ and be faithful in bearing weakness to Christ. Humility, hunger, amazement and faithfulness. Or drawing from the few verses that we read just now in Revelation chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 3. The last point, second point, Jesus reward and promise. The good thing about this, that this church, even though it is like that, there are still some few very good people, faithful few. Verse 4 to verse 6, Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not sold their coats. They will walk with me, dressed in white, for they are worthy. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my Father and His angels. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Good news for any dying church today or any dying, spiritually dying persons today. Jesus has a plan. He has a plan to resurrect us. He has a plan to revive us. Amen? This is the good news. We know where we are. And this is the good news for every one of us. We will need to look into ourselves very, very carefully and go back to do the things that the Lord has instructed us to do as according to here, Revelations. The very first thing is the instructions, wake up. So turn to your neighbor and say to them, wake up! Turn to your neighbor and say to them, Wake up! How do you wake a person up? Wake up.
Maybe we need to work out a little bit. Maybe we haven't warmed up yet the voice. Alarm. <laughs> That's one way. But some of us, we need many alarms. And to some of us, we need a lot, a lot, a lot of wake-up call because we are into deep sleep, spiritually speaking. It's not one-time kind of things, but it's continuous waking up, awaken us, waking us up, waking us up. You want to give all the churches one word or two words kind of summary. Ephesus is love. Smyrna is be faithful. Pergamon is discern. Theatira is to think. And Sardis is wake up. And here, it says that to the one who conquers, to the one who overcomes, to the one who go through all these things, and yet the faithful few still remain faithful. If you will maintain a Christian testimony, in this very threatening and complacent and very, very deceiving culture, if you will repent of arrogance and seek the Lord in humility, if you will wake up and regain a hunger for the things of God, if you will regain the wonder of the gospel again, you are the one who have conquered. Then you will receive the glorious rewards from Jesus, clothed in white. This symbolizes righteousness of Jesus Christ by the power, by the blood of the Lamb. Those who pres preserve in faithfulness show that they were truly justified and converted. They are the true believer and true Christians and true disciple of Jesus Christ. It is not by name only. Never blot out His name. We can have the access to heaven but there will be some who have the reputations of being alive and actually will not enter into the kingdom. Today, we are so concerned whether our name is in the electoral. The electoral basically is for us to know that every year you are active, you are alive, and come AGM, you can contribute, you can be elected, you ought to be the PCC to serve the church, and to also tidy up, up a little bit of our memberships after confirmation. Because we have, been move, we have movement from one place to another place, so we need an update of that. But when your name is not there, please make your way and to ask more so that your name can be there. But that is not the most important. The most important is that our name is registered in the book of life. We have a name up there. And in order for us to have a name up there, it's not just on earth. We call, Lord, 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 I serve you, I cast out demons, I, uh, I come to church, I get my faithful service awards in serving you. No. That's basically telling us that in our service, we are faithful, that's all. And you have a recognition over there. But most importantly is then our relationship with Him. Jesus, in Luke chapter 10, verse 20, However, do not rejoice that the Spirit submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And Jesus will confess the name before the Father and before His angels. Like Stephen, the book of Acts. You see he heaven opens and standing there. And Jesus is standing as a witness. And Jesus is saying to Stephen, He is mine. He is the faithful one. And today, the one day, we will have that moment as well. The world may reject us if we belong to Jesus. But Jesus will recognize us. Jesus will confess the faithful few before God the Father, before all his angels.
That is his promise and that is his reward. Lastly, in conclusions, wake up and repent. Wake up and repent. We thank God that there is still hope. You can still have time to wake up. We know we are sleeping. We know there is time for us to wake up. Recognize the problem. Realize that there is a war, a spiritual war that is happening. Realize that there is a mission that the Lord Jesus Christ has prepared for us. Come back to the city of Sardis again, how they were being attacked and took over because the soldier fell asleep. We need to remind ourselves again and again and again. Be alert. Be watchful. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up and repent. Wake up to what is important, the gospel, the spirit's work, the mission. Wake up to the enemy's attack. The easiest way to attack an enemy is while they are asleep. So normally, they will go attack at night. So during night time, we need to be watchful. Wake up to what is important, that Jesus is coming and this is real. And he is coming again real soon. Secondly, believe and keep going. There was a living remnant in Sardis. And there was some life and they were to strengthen what was present. Jesus did not take away those faithful few from that church. They are to remain there. Even only a few. I'm not sure how many of us watched Saba play uh, in the first league of FA Cup last Friday. Versus Tronganu, we lost 4 0 first leg. Coming Saturday, Stadium League Cast over here. Too bad I cannot go because uh, I got a service over here. If not, I will go there and to cheer because there is still time, it's not over yet, still another leg. If you are the coach, what would you tell your players when you are 4 0 down? Is there still hope? Today, there is still hope for any one of us who found ourselves in that nature, spiritually dead. Believe and keep going. What you have started is very good, but hold on to it. Keep believing. Keep going. Don't lose heart. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4 to verse 6. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that He has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. You know how we live among you for your sake. For us who do not understand, they are living in persecution, in suffering. You know how we live among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord. For you welcome the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. Paul is telling them to keep on remembering how receive it. A church will die if they don't receive the gospel gladly over and over and over again. Lastly, the spirit of life, the spirit of God, listen 
to Him. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to His guidance. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Now daily walk with Him. So that we can keep believing, keep going. So that we can have an awakening, wake up and repent. May the Lord lead us and guide us. Let's pray. Lord, we need you. We need your spirit. We need your spirit of wisdom. We need your spirits of understanding. We need your spirits of counsel. And we need your spirits of might. And we need your spirits of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So Lord, let your spirit rest on us and your church that we do know we have hope in you, we have life in you, we have strength in you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.